Welcome back to Healthy Planet, Healthy Me. I'm Sherry Beal, your host, and you're tuned to 98.7 FM Los Angeles, 98.7 FM Santa Barbara, and we are streaming worldwide at kpfk.org. We have the great honor today to be joined with S. David Freeman, the author of Winning Our Energy Independence, an insider, an energy insider shows how. S. David Freeman is the president of the commission that oversees the Port of Los Angeles. He served as the chairman of the board of the California Consumer Power and Conservation Financing Authority in his distinguished 40-year career. Mr. Freeman has been present at the creation, shaping our public awareness, helping design governmental institutions, and writing the laws that define the framework for U.S. environmental and energy policy. Freeman also authored Energy, the New Era, Welcome to Healthy Planet, Healthy Me, Mr. Freeman. Well, it's good to be here. It's a great honor to have you. Well, we'll see about that. (laughs) (laughs) No, I I know there's lots of information that you can give us and help us out with, and we barely have time to touch on what you know. Now, in your 40 years or so of working as an insider in the U.S. energy arena, starting in 1967 as, as the first person in the U.S. government with responsibility for energy policy under President Johnson, please paint a picture of the current energy landscape for us. Well, we used to joke back then that our energy policy was to pray for mild weather (laughs) Ah. (laughs) because we didn't have one. And I think that it's fair to say that 40 years later, uh, we're praying for mild weather. Uh, We we have not developed a thoughtful, coherent national energy policy uh, in all those years because there's so much difference of opinion in America, and uh, it's such a large country. I mean, the states where coal was mined were for coal, and the states like Texas where they drilled a lot for oil were for oil. And uh, the idea of efficiency and renewable energy uh, only began to be thought of seriously under Jimmy Carter. And it's 30 years later, and this issue is dominating the presidential debates And frankly, uh, I don't think the American people really understand how fundamental and how awesome this problem is. It's not just global warming, which uh, most people realize now is a very clear and present danger to our way of life. There is this dependency on imported oil, and we are like uh, an addict needing to go back to the bar for one more drink. We, the only way that we're going to reduce the price of oil is to get off of it. Uh, I haven't heard anyone explain this uh, strongly enough. The price of oil is set in a world market of 80 million barrels a day. We produce in America, all of our oil that we produce is about eight. And the offshore drilling might make a little bit of difference, but guess what? The, the petroleum-producing nations have a cartel. They don't even hide it. They meet in Vienna once a year, and they fix quotas on how much they produce. So the king of Saudi Arabia can snap his fingers and cut back production a whole lot more than we could ever find in increased drilling. So we have no impact on the world market. Besides, even if we were to add a million barrels a day out of 80, what difference? The Chinese are growing faster than that. The Indian, Indian. India is growing faster than that. Uh, as long as we stay on oil, we're going to be paying these high prices. And here's the beautiful thing that people should know, that solar or wind power in the form of electricity can drive your car for the equivalent of a dollar a gallon gasoline. So it's not only cleaner, it's a whole lot cheaper, and we need to get on with it. You see, I'm old enough to remember that in World War II, we told Detroit to stop making cars altogether and start making tanks and airplanes, and we won that war in less time than we've been in Iraq. And yet we know that you can make a car that you can plug into your socket and run it 30, 40 miles on electricity, and they're not making them yet. You know, all of the 
talk about going green. It's just beautiful. It, it's music. But are we reducing carbon going into the atmosphere? Are we cutting back on imported oil? No, no. We're talking. We're talking a good game, and we're turning the lights off, and we're recycling, and I don't belittle any of those things. Uh, but Willie Sutton used to rob the banks because that's where the money is. <laughs> And we have to go after the carbon, and mm. we have to go after the imported oil and get off of it. And I don't see uh, the kind of determination yet uh, to do that. You realize what what the uh, oil and gas and coal people are doing. Uh, they're now running ads saying, oh, we're for wind power. We're for solar power. We're and, for clean energy. And for oil and for gas and for coal. They're lumping the poisons into the same sentence with the clean stuff and make it sound like it, we need it all. Uh, when the truth of the matter is we, usually when something's poisonous, we have enough common sense to stop using it. When we found a little bit of lead in the, or maybe a whole lot of lead mm-hmm. in, the, in the toys at Christmas time, right. uh, we didn't uh, say, well, we, we need to reduce the lead a little bit. We said we need to stop making those kind of toys. Pull it off the shelves, don't import it. That's right. Of course, we have different Uh, regulations uh, when something's made here. We're at a crossroads. Uh, You know, people say that we have only a certain number of years. Well, it's not Al Gore's timetable. It's Mother Nature's. And uh, Mother Nature isn't paying a whole lot of attention to the naysayers. We, (laughs) uh, You know, the ice is melting at a huge rate. And uh, the... Terrorists are continuing to kill American uh, men and women in Iraq, and we're over there in large part because of the oil. Uh, and, and basically, nuclear power is trying to stage a comeback while we're telling Iran that you can't have a nuclear power plant because it might lead to a nuclear bomb. Hello. And yet, <laughs> what we, do we have? They better, uh, we better start doing what we're telling them to do or no one will pay any attention to us. So... Uh, common sense doesn't seem to have a seat at the table yet. People have forgotten just how dangerous nuclear power is. You know, that stuff can blow us from here to hell and back uh, just like that. I mean, the idea of building radioactive factories in an age of terror ought to be so terrifying that we wouldn't even think about it. Yet, you see these ads on TV, uh, uh, you know, uh, supporting that and in, in, in marketing it. So we, we, we now realize that our energy supply today is really poisonous. And I think most thinking people are now aware that we need to shift uh, to the sun and the wind and uh, clean renewable sources. But getting the people to turn loose of the poisons seems to be a terribly tough thing because they got all the money. I mean, you look at the ads on TV. Can you believe that they advertise clean coal? No, that's an oxymoron, Uh, is what I say every time I see the commercial. The dangers are much more real, and they're here and now, but the solutions are very real and here and now. We need to really advance the ball, and we need to go all out for renewable power and show the rest of the world that you can get more and more renewable energy, and not only to serve our existing loads, but to power our cars and trucks and buses in the future and get off of oil as well as getting off of coal and nuclear power. Okay. Mr. Freeman, thank you so much for joining us today on Healthy Planet, Healthy Me. Uh, Mr. Freeman, the president of the commission that oversees the Port of Los Angeles, which is quite a responsibility, also the author of Winning Our Energy Independence. We'll see you next week, and together we'll create a healthy planet, healthy me. Encontro um coração também cansado de sofrer. É tempo de 